going. I am ready when you are ready, Claire. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Babe, the Bitcoin and Blockchain Evolution. I am, of course, Sarah Herring with Matt Davio, Matt Davio, whichever you guys think is the right way. I'm going with Davio. <laughs> We are super, super lucky to be joined today by Robbie Schwartner. You probably will know him as Crypto Robbie. Robbie runs a fantastic blog. He's got all kinds of stuff going on in the crypto space. And just scrolling through last week, some of the posts he's put up, it's super, super interesting, super good stuff. And as we talked about a little bit before, before we started, Robbie's also actively engaged in making sure that the projects that he's supporting also have you know, some larger reaching social implications, some things that are, you know, making mankind a little bit better. And he's got a great hashtag, which I think we should all start pushing forever. Hashtag, why don't you tell them all about it, Robbie? Sarah, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, actually, my focus in crypto world is not to make money, to make billions, get rich. I have everything. I have my house, I have a car, and I'm quite happy. But what I want to know is, to know about blockchain, what is it about? I was so excited when I, three years ago, started dealing with that, and it made me so much, um, I, I saw so much changes possible in this society, and that made me also to think about what can blockchain uh, do for the people? How can this, um, this technology change the society? We have to with development with the internet, where we saw, okay, that's good, people are connected, 20 years ago, this started, and now we have a new wave coming. That's what I saw, see so, so, yeah, that I see very clear. We have a new way of linking people by not only transferring information, but assets, maybe cryptocurrencies, maybe tokens. We don't know yet, but we have a new way of linking people, and that's very nice. Hey, Robbie, you said three years ago there was something. What, what was it in your life that triggered like this uh, opening, this awakening for you? What was it that, that happened? Matt, it was like um, I was, I'm, I'm coming from the energy field. So energy research, energy distribution. I worked in China with large high voltage switch gear, this high energy. And then three years ago, uh, blockchain technology came up into my mind because these new smart grids, intelligent networks of energy could be also built on blockchain. And that's where I started. And that's where I saw, oh, wow, that's an interesting application. First, I thought, you know, my first impression of blockchain, I, saw, I thought it's houses, you know, one block after that are connected. Right. That was what right. I said, yeah, blockchain. And I said, mm, blockchain, interesting. You, you connect the buildings. So actually, it's not. I learned that and very fast. And I understood that it's really, after reading this Satoshi paper, I really got so, I, I saw this magic. I saw the magic of this system. And I still feel it. When I talk about it, I still feel this, you know, goosebumps when I talk yeah. now. There is something special. And it's uh, with Energy Blockchain, I, I work for the Austrian Research Fund. We fund projects that have a, a budget for energy, sustainable energy projects. And there we started the first research project which we could fund uh, from governmental money to investigate what is possible. And that's what my, uh, was my start. And then I learned more, more, more. And finally, now I'm kind of freelancer, call myself blockchain influencer. Maybe I really want to influence blockchains. So <laughs> what, what, are, what are some of the key problems that you believe blockchain can solve when it comes to energy today? You know, what are the, what are, what are the yeah. lowest lying fruit that you're picking off the trees? That? What I see for energy blockchains, it's like we have a lot of... Um, new prosumers called producers and consumers at the same time of energy, like private houses having on their roof photovoltaic devices, solar energy devices, and especially with electricity, so uh, photovoltaic devices. One can build not only Bitcoin right in the ledger, but you can also write kilowatt in this ledger. And you can also distribute if houses have electricity, they can, and some are in the shadow, some are not, you can over hundreds of kilometers uh, distribute energy and switch that on this is done on the blockchain you don't need a central utility who manage this who also uh, has a, gets money for this but this can be built on a technology where we trust 
this works. And but still, we are in, we are in the beginning. It doesn't work yet. It it's, it's works in with a few households. We have such labs, living labs, but it's on small scale now. But really, if I if I if I'm if I can simplify it for my smaller brain, what oh, you're trying to, <laughs> well, what what you're trying to do, I believe, is take excess. We have excess energy in our world today. Yeah, and you're exactly. and you're and you're working towards redistributing not only energy, whether it's wind, solar, water power, and then the problems that we have with people that don't have water in the world. And, and maybe redistributing the wealth, so to speak, uh, of that energy, whatever platform it sits on, to areas, even though they might not even be um, uh, immediately related or directly near the source. Is that correct? Yeah. In theory? Right. Um, you, you, with energy, there is a limit in distance. You, have, you cannot uh, transfer over very, you can, but you lose a lot of energy on the way. So for this energy, this was just a test lab with this energy to do. And there is a Austrian-based, German-based uh, ICO. Long, one of actually Vitalik Buterin was the advisor three years ago for this for this uh, first uh, first blockchain project. Grid Singularity is the name. It's still going running, and it's still yeah still investigating how this energy blockchain can done. There is a US-based KWH like kilowatt hour KWH. Sure. Um, uh, similar project. So there are some energy blockchain out. Where I see the return on the side, it's, it's not a humanitarian project, this one. This is more to try out a very specific field where it's really to try out blockchain, what is possible beyond cryptocurrencies. But uh, for instance, this morning I was um, with Caritas Austria. Caritas is the Catholic church uh, humanitarian organization they have in Austria. 10,000 employees, so it's a big one. Yeah, they do mm -hmm. a lot of uh, home care and a lot yeah. of uh, humanitarian health stuff, but they are also investigating, they are thinking about, you know, what can we do with cryptocurrencies? Can we, you know, receive funds uh, via bitcoins? Can we also transfer funds to Africa? Um, what, what is possible with cryptocurrencies? Does this harm the, the, yeah, the yeah. brand of currency? really high value or is it is it a you know is it an added value what's the risk what if crypto goes you know maybe you have this bubble bursts so the, there's a still of um continue, but there is the many humanitarian projects which are built on blockchain probably in future there was la la land for instance was a refugee project for myanmar refugees the rohingya minority that's what I told the cartels. I said, look, there is some projects already going on. United Nations has a blockchain uh, commission um, for sustainable development. So they realize the potential. World Food Program does a project on uh, not only transferring food, you know, what they do, they do. At the moment, they transfer food. But there is a clear um, dedication also to transfer money to give, I mean, people are, People in need, they are not dumb. They are intelligent yeah. people. Right. And, and right. why not giving them money doing, uh, and, and they make best, the best self. And that also could be done with cryptocurrencies, probably. That's what they think. Yeah, th so, they, so, so, so let me, uh, Sarah, uh, you know, what I'm hearing is microfinance, uh, yes. humanitarian, you know, sounds yes. like you're going to meet with, sounds like you might meet with the Pope soon because you were working with this uh, Catholic <laughs> organization. I mean, why not? Why not? Oh, no. Why not? I, I, why not dream big? Okay, Matt. Just remind me. I'm I'm advisor for. I tell you something. Having a Jewish grandmother, I'm advisor for Islamic banking um, based in Malaysia, Hada D Bank. It's and you know why? When I was even a teenager, I found in Quran this line very interesting. Don't um, don't use interest rates when lending money. When giving up money, that's in Quran, and I like that topic. And they ask me, that's you know, the they Bible ask me, Ravi, would it is in the Bible actually, too? Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. Right, right. In the Quran, it's very strict. You have a banking system built on on. It's called Islamic banking. It's it's a, mm -hmm. nothing new. It's a very old system. Right. But there is an ICO which uh, combines this Islamic banking. Uh, you know, very thousand year old um, idea of no interest rates, which even touched me as a teenager combining with blockchain technology and that i found really 
nice because it's also in Quran you read this sharing you know sharing economy there is these profits made from the money should be shared at least and that's really is cool and that on blockchain so we don't <laughs> and yeah and that's that's project I, I look I'm advisor on, on several ICOs. Yes, I do that. I, it's, it's my living also. I have to feed my kids uh, and me myself to make a living. But I look very deep into what are they doing? Is it really just for making money? Or is it just there is an application behind which makes sense? Because blockchain anyway, Bitcoin is criticized. Cryptocurrency, that is a hype. It's crazy. And all this, you know, we know this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I mm -hmm. think if we focus on applications which give a return on society, and there is hashtag return on society, I built that, that's a creation. A little creation. I hope it will gain more attention in future. I'm yeah. preparing a book, by the way, on that. We'll come out in Great summer. Uh, so we'll see. Um, yeah. I hope so. I hope people listen to that. But still, I focus on this project because I think that's where we also can reach a bigger crowd, not the 20 to 40 year old nerdy uh, male uh, computer, you know, the, the, this digital crowd, but maybe the rest of the people. That's an idea. <laughs> well, that's why I'm here because I'm beautiful and I'm not that smart. <laughs> yes. Versus, oh, you're you know. yes. very, very so, sexy. <laughs> so I'm, <laughs> so I'm trying, <laughs> we're trying, we're, we're having our next guest actually later on today, Greg Kerr is going to be talking a lot about the energy and how we can use blockchain, I think, in the energy um, space. But what I think is something super specific to you that you can offer that maybe a lot of our other guests haven't been able to, um, a lot of what people are talking about in terms of what are the best things to invest in. One thing, of course, that they're talking about mm. is that it's important to invest in things which they see having, you know, financial potential, but also a lot of people in talking about looking at the white papers is finding projects that, that you do believe. And I think this is something that a lot of people who are into the crypto space are, are actually looking for exactly what you're talking about, this return on society and, and, and novel ideas, things that could potentially change you know, the world we live in right now. And I noticed on your blog, there are a few coins and things that you believe do have this potential. And I yeah. think it's essential that we bring this up, like t tell our audience, what are some of the things that the coins that you really believe in and, and why, why those, what, what do you see as the potential, you know, implications of those coins? Sarah, yes, there are some, uh, which I really find very interesting. Uh, one is peculium, peculium. Um, I'm also, you know, dealing with people in, with artificial intelligence. That's, that's, um, artificial intelligence is in maybe a new way we change the world. It's, I mean, we have artificial, artificial, intelligence and self-learning systems since a very long time, since 30, 40 years. It's nothing new, but we maybe have another era of, of uh, this new technology. And there is a combination of blockchain technology with artificial intelligence could be very interesting. And there is a uh, ICO which I really favor and very much support is Peculium.io. They recently had their ICO and there will this PCL coin um, token will be um, out there on hit Hit, uh, H, uh, hit BTC, uh, hit BTC very soon. So that's where it's traded. Um, so this peculium has uh, the, what they want to do, it's also kind of managing saving of people, managing savings of people. So it's a self uh, um, artificially uh, intelligent supported system, which makes um, automatic trade decision, trading decisions, but not this, day trading type of thing. It's a long-term uh, saving application, which really makes sense. It could, it's like the, it's, it's for people who have some savings and would, put, would want to put it on a, a blockchain, or would put, put it on a bank, a blockchain, this application offers this. So there is some um, artificial intelligence support for making these savings more. And we will, um, there is already, they can do forecast with this peculium already. With this peculium, uh, they do Bitcoin, for instance. They have Bitcoin um, rating forecast and the Bitcoin development forecast. And it works to some extent, but they still develop it. And it's think, I think it could be a very interesting tool, artificial intelligence on blockchain. And there are not many out there. By the way, I'm working on the landscape of artificial intelligence on blockchain. We will soon have this 
Um, I, I, I do another round on Thursday. I work on, with, with artificial intelligence people to find the ICOs, uh, blockchain prog, um, projects on, and there are some more. So it's not Peculium, there are some more. There is this Zero X Magnus and more. But Peculium is focusing on savings. By the way, Peculium doesn't say it's only for saving. They have even more the fantasies that there's also energy trading could be done on, um, with blockchain and even cancer research that they have a health line to. But the first focus is savings. And the cancer research is really touched my heart also because there is four cards. This health application is nice is interesting. So there is more fantasy. Even so here, so here's, here's what I hear from this, right? The, the positive uh, that comes out of this is people are able that maybe don't have banks in locations that where they are in the world, they have a, uh, a token or a currency that they're able to save. And then yes. via that saving vehicle that is secure and able to be then distributed, whether it's healthcare research, cancer research, energy, uh, startups, yeah. Uh, I know you talk a lot about transportation, right? So whether that's transport of, of common, you know, commodities and foods, right? That's a problem worldwide that most people don't recognize. So having blockchain yes. associated with those types of businesses then allows for people uh, really to truly uh, put their money where their mouth is and put it into projects that have meaning in their lives immediately, right? Versus right having to be an accredited investor and having to wait until you have a quarter million dollars, right? But hey, if you've worked hard and you've saved your money, which is half the problem, just being exactly. able to take capital and redistribute it, that wealth into other projects and, and help other projects. And then if, if possible, obviously there's returns from that personally. As you said, profit's not necessarily the, the main goal, it's the byproduct of the research. So I love, I love the way that you're, you're really spinning that. And it's really, I, I think it's a very holistic way of uh, investing. Uh, and, and it's one that is not fraught with a lot of middle people taking a piece out of it. Exactly. And Peculium, you know, also the, the people behind it, they are artificial intelligence uh, experts also having worked at banks. So they have a banking background. There is some expert, there's, a lot of expertise actually on big data, which are all necessary for this artificial intelligence to build on blockchain. So there is not only just the, you know, idealists people, but they know what they're doing and they have a clear uh, schedule, what, what they do when um, to achieve. They had 24th of January was the closing of the ICO, the first round of the ICO. And there will be continuous, uh, now they let larger investors in and there is interest, I see that. So for me, it's a, a really good project. Right. Uh, another project is Sportify. Sport is not Spotify. If you Google sports. it, it's hard. It's sporty, sports. It's about sports. And it's, um, it's not the usual thing where you, you raise money for clubs and so on. But it's bringing young athletes together with investors directly on the blockchain. So young athletes, especially from countries like which are not so you know like in, in austria it's fine but in in other countries uh, in developing countries this mm -hmm. is a chance that people who are talented can have their sports career supported by investors directly there's a direct link of course this is not just blockchain which is built on but it needs people to uh, to um, follow up the process because humans are involved i mean young often teenager in the or late teenagers they uh, to, to support these careers very early and this is a really nice way to get not get yeah actually get rid of the club to dominate this uh, and there was in, uh, in austria uh, europe this kind of with fifa and then the world scandal on football many bribing incidents and so on and these, these so, in essence, sold, like, so, so again in essence, we can help uh, young athletes who show potential with their athletics exactly to change their lives via being the best that they can be in their sport. And you know, maybe, maybe they make it to the big leagues or not, but the point is that that positive relationship that sports I know has, I've got four children and each of my kids <laughs> play sports. And it's, yeah. it, it, is a, it is a positive learning life experience, whether or not they play pros, it doesn't matter. The, the, exactly. the, the, the team aspect, working with other people, coaches, different coaches, is such a positive thing that 
I find that fascinating, and and that and thank you for telling us about Sportify because yeah. I think Sportify. you know it, it, it's even a problem in developed countries. I, I know my children play lacrosse, and lacrosse yeah. is not widely played across the United States, let alone the world. Yet yeah. it's the fastest growing team sport in North America. So what if you could put a stick in the hands of children in Africa or or uh, you know Slo Slovenia or anywhere? If they had that opportunity to pick up a stick and play, you know, we'd probably see the next great one come out of something like that. So that's really right cool. I, I love that. Yeah. You see, it, it's because it's not it's not a betting platform or investment increased, but it's bringing people who are interested in other people that they can support careers. That's really a nice aspect. That's where I see. Yeah, it could, of course, there's many dangers I'm going to see of many, many problems. Yes, but the idea is nice. The, and of course, it's in the a thorough follow up. It needs a thorough supervision of what's going on here. That, um, but in principle, and, and Ronaldinho, by the way, Ronaldinho, the soccer, uh, famous soccer player, football player, um, he supports this. His testimonial is there is not, obviously, it has re, um, already reached a certain level where people, of which are quite famous notice that and they support right. it yeah well because they know they know what they know what athletics has done for their personal life so they're, they're totally going to support that i get it yeah and, and yeah, of course talk a little bit about um you know talk a little bit about the transport side of things what's going on in transportation because i know you're you know, you've, you're involved with a yeah. couple icos on the transportation what are some of the big ideas there that you really are excited about actually um I don't favor a specific um, transport ICO now, but, but I, I had a look with, with Katja Schechtner. She's from OECD. She is coordinating the transport activities. OECD is a well-known organization. They are all the big, big states are there. They do this rating standardization of transport. And also they, they give recommendation, policy recommendations. It's a big organization. And this organization, OECD, I, I like UN level. And she tries to coordinate blockchain activities across the globe um, on transport, on mobility. So we are mm -hmm. first speaking about mobility of people. How could this build on blockchain? New apps where you directly buy um, kilometers, yeah, the last famous last mile, yeah, for instance, where you can um, directly connect to with the device, not I mean, the service is, is transport. I want to be transport. I don't want to question myself, is it a train or bus? But I need the transport. And this, this um, a blockchain application could, we don't see it yet, by the way, uh, but could bring some um, advantages. We will, we will see how this works. There is, but there's also the, uh, so it's for, uh, for people. The other end of, the, of, the, of the, this scale is, uh, we have, for instance, for instance Maersk, the law one of the largest right. ship the shipping company, company. Yeah. yeah they also realized okay we could follow up goods with with blockchain put it on blockchain so a supply logistics company entering into blockchain tells me that they realize the potential and maybe tells and it tells me there is a business so we will see blockchain icos we will see blockchain projects going on which mm -hmm could lead in the long run to some business which makes sense uh, another project by the way when we talk about transport logistics it's a, an ico which i favor very much it's winding tree winding tree is a travel app it brings it it's a travel platform where it's um where they try to actually uh provide the service which booking.com does and check Felix and the other Opodo flights, you know, these different yeah. flight booking sure. platforms. So they try to provide a service on blockchain that you have directly a link between you yourself and the hotel owner. So no intermediary like booking.com, which takes a, a I, fee I heard again. 15%. Yeah. Yeah, a fee, 15%. So it's not nothing. Um, of course, running a blockchain will also cost. It's not for free but it will definitely not cost 15%. That's right, for sure. Right, because, right. because the so, difference is then, yeah. I, I'm just yeah. curious, you know, if you say something like that, so people that already have those customers, wouldn't it be wise for somebody like Booking or Priceline to say, hey, 
well, why don't we come up with our own token and uh, continue the business? Maybe we're not making as much, but we'll open it up to a much bigger marketplace worldwide, right? Benefit more mm -hmm. people and we would still profit yeah. by, cause, because maybe we're only doing yeah. it with certain, certain segments of the, the world uh, economy today. That would be, do you see crossovers of that, you know, kind of an old company, new company happening? No. Okay. Really, you know, I mean, that's we we have we see this with letters, you know, mail mail companies, you know, state owned. Who mm -hmm. did they enter the internet business ever? I mean, right. did they support um, email? I haven't no. heard about it. Right. Yeah, I get so, it. I get what, it. That's that's very clear. I I rarely see that. I of course um banks now um contact me sometimes. Yeah, large banks. Yesterday they had lunch. Uh, oh, sorry. Uh, oh yeah. So that's I had a phone call. So uh, bank bank banks, contacted you banks, yesterday. Yeah. yeah. Yes. No. They they say, oh, oh Rabbi, uh, uh, Mr. Schwabner, we have heard that that you are into this blockchain business, and we have we have to have a use case, and we know that the customers they ask, and and they, I'm sorry, I have to. Yeah. I, I, just a, just a second. Can I? Cut, I, I have to quit sure. this. Uh, it's okay. This talk. So there is a call. <laughs> okay, that's not good. Okay, um, and they say uh, they ask me what could we do because we need use cases. Our shareholders they ask the, the you know the CEOs are the board. Yeah, the board is asking. Yeah. Yes, yes, board definitely, definitely. C suite, <laughs> suite arcs. So I tell them, of course, I tell them what I always tell. Yeah, because do something which helps people, um, which which makes sense for society. Um, try to have a, um, a use case, not with, of course, many users involved at the end, uh, mm -hmm. but not so many transaction rates. Slow, uh, you know, not too many transactions at the moment because the systems are not built for that yet. We see the difficulty. So many users, uh, not many transactions, and then something which, yeah, which, which helps. Maybe a second bank, for instance, for people who have no account, but then they would have an account on their phone at least a free sure. account um, sure. so that, that would make sense and um, other you know they, they could be many many other things but um, this they, they are really in trouble they have these old structures these banks insurance companies and so another another ICO I, I really like is the uh, Injapal it's in so insurance pal Injapal they have a really clever system of um, of trustees involved endorses so mm -hmm. what happens, um, they, they, for instance, for a certain insurance, take a car insurance, yeah? It costs maybe 1,000 US dollar to ins insure a car per year. Mm -hmm. And then you can uh, act as trustee, for instance, and then I say, okay, I will not, I talked to the founder, Matt Peterman, and, and I said, yeah, but I will not try, I mean, why should I be an endorser for somebody? And I said, yeah, and then I actually thought, okay, maybe for my daughters, because they <laughs> maybe don't drive so right. I could be, it could make the insurance cheaper for you, right. but if something happened, so, and they, they calculated from 1,000, maybe it makes 250 euro or US dollar cheaper, you thought cheaper, and then, and then if something happened, you have to pay 300, 400. If, if, so if you and I, much. you and I become the uh, annuitized backing of the insurance, again, cutting out that fat that the, the, the insurance companies have built into it's it. It's not only the fact that the, the, the idea is in Japan, really nice, and they had the ICO. I, I will tell you later. Uh, but first, what happened is you have first not the big insurance taking all the money away for the advertising, but yeah, you have yeah. a new system of risk management because maybe I don't have a son, but if I would have a son, it's like, if it's like me, I would never be an Ordorsa because he drives like crazy and he would- I have, trash I have three of them, I know, I know. Oh yeah, yeah. So you bring as a person, as, as, as participant, new level of risk management, trust into the yep. system because you know your people around. And if you do this with a friend, endorsing for a friend, they can endorse you back. And this right. is not only linked to insurance, but maybe to lending money to other things then. So this system of endorses could be used more widely. And what, they, what happened, they had an ICO, it ended mid-January, something around there. They had in 80 seconds, not 80 days, 80 seconds, they got the hard cap with 80 million US dollar, 
18 million in 80 seconds. And that showed, and Matt, I called Matt uh, the day, I congratulated him and said, and you know, Robbie, we had 120 million in the pipeline. Of course, there was some double, you know, but we had this in the pipeline. They, would, they wanted to come in. They scream at that they cannot come in now. And they say, but we don't need the money for the first stage. We have to develop the first system. And then for the next system, we need the next one. It's also nice to say for somebody who develops something, we don't need the whole money. That's yeah. really good. And that's, that's great. Saying, and that's what they are. They're really nice people. Matt is from the um, insurance uh, business. He is... Um, he worked in this anti-fraud in an in, uh, actually in a large insurance company, so he knows anti-fraud unit. So he's an expert on that. And the yeah. uh, Tom, uh, Tom is the the IT expert. So a good team, and they have a great well, team now. They're doing that. That's that is really them. cool. I like that. I really like that idea. And that, and again, you know, uh, we've talked to a number of people that have said you've got to bring scale projects that don't need, as you said. High transactions, not not yeah. right away, but but high users, yeah. low trans low number of transactions. So that that gives Sarah. I mean, don't you think that makes a lot of sense for like the progress of what we're seeing here? I mean, to me, it makes a ton of sense. Yeah, of course. And it's interesting because I would say for me, um, in terms of the things that I've invested in, also I'm not somebody that really even at this point has time to be trading all the time or figuring mm, out yeah. you know, what's going up and down. So I also am mostly Actually. invested in projects that I think have value long-term. And one of them, in fact, is very, it, Populous is very similar, I think, to what you're talking, like you're saying that lending platforms and like this idea, this concept of peer-to-peer -peer lending or even peer-to-business lending is, I mean, obviously I, I am a big believer in that. I think this is a, a revolution for, for people in general, that we can participate in the economy in a way that we've never been able to before. Right. Yeah. So, Robbie, uh, the we, first, we, can you? I just wanted ahead, to ask sir. really quick, just for my own self, mm -hmm. the, the first one that you talked about, uh, which it has like kind of a strange name because of the P. Yeah. Peculium. Peculium. Yeah. Peculium. What's the ac acronym for it? Does what's it have a PCL? PCL. 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 Okay. PCL. PCL. All right. I'm definitely. PCL. Hey, Robbie. Peculium. Robbie, I want to, no. I want to, I want to hold, hold us to task and keep us uh, to the time that we committed to you. So, Peculium. can you read it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. B E C U L I U M. <laughs> got it. I got it. Peace. Hey, Robbie, thank you for coming on. I want to, I want to hold us accountable to the time. Uh, kind of yes. uh, make sure okay. we're doing our jobs. And the I will ask you. This time. <laughs> Yeah, and, and I will ask you in the future if we'd I'd love to have you back on and talk again because this is so fascinating, so fast moving. Our listeners are going to love this. This is the type of thing, what you're giving us, that people don't understand. It's the level that they need to hear. So I don't know. I, again, I know I'm not speaking for Sarah. I'm speaking for myself, but I loved what I heard you talk about today. I'm super excited. So thank, thank you very much. I'm for those very listening, <laughs> it's at Crypto Robbie at Crypto Robbie, and you can check out his blog um, at Crypto. It's Crypto Robbie dot blog. Com, dot yeah. blog. Yeah, super yeah. super easy. Crypto also, Robbie dot blog. Crypto Robbie dot com. It's everywhere. Like, just and Google Crypto Robbie. LinkedIn. And my home actually is LinkedIn. Interestingly, LinkedIn. I became LinkedIn. kind of big. LinkedIn. Thirty thousand followers there. I see you're, you're maxed out. You're maxed out. You're maxed out. Conversation about that. But um, I also definitely, please let us know. I'm not sure if your book is going to be hashtag return on society, but whenever your book does come out, definitely. please let us know. We'd love to. We want to talk about, about that book when it comes out. Definitely. We want to have you on again when you're ready. And Thank honestly, you. your enthusiasm is completely contagious. So it I is. look forward to talking to you again soon, Robbie. Thank you. Thanks, Robbie. Ciao. Have a, Sarah, have a great day. Bye-bye.